Hello and welcome to Tough Texas Lawn Care, a three-part series presented by Tarrant Regional Water District and Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. My name is Heather Bass and I am a conservation specialist at Tarrant Regional Water District. Today is part one, the best turfs for Texas of our Tough Texas Lawn Care three-part series. And um, the next three parts will be um, well, the next two parts will be the next two Wednesdays. And if you have any questions throughout, you're welcome to type them into the question and answer box and we'll get back to you uh, with an answer. And before we start and before I introduce our speaker, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about Tarrant Regional Water District. So this presentation is supported by Tarrant Regional Water District, which is our um, local regional wa raw water supplier. And so um, what TRWD does is that they maintain uh, four area lakes and all the pipelines that are needed to bring raw surface water um, to local water treatment plants. Those local water treatment plants then treat that water to drinking water standards and provide it to our communities. Conservation is an important water supply strategy to continue to supply water to a growing population here in the North Texas region. And um, so that's why Tarrant Regional Water District sponsors presentations like this and outdoor um, watering education. And so um, our the Tarrant Regional Water District um, conservation website is savetarrantwater.com and that's where you can go to find all of our resources. You can go and sign up for free weekly watering advice there. This is custom to your location. So every Monday you will get either a text message or an email, whichever you choose, telling you approximately how much you should water your lawn that week based on the local um, weather and um, based on your location. You can also go there if you're a Tarrant County resident to sign up for a free sprinkler evaluation and that's where a licensed irrigator will come to your house and take a look at your sprinkler system and let you know um, what type of if there's any repairs that need to be done and how you can potentially um, reduce your water waste and work with you on your sprinkler controller. We also have a calendar of classes and events exactly like this one where you can go and you can find um, videos of past events that we've done and you can find a calendar of future events. And then we also have um, tons of just water saving tips and information and then um, some really cool DIY videos that'll help you um, make repairs to your sprinkler or make a, a rainwater harvesting barrel or all kinds of cool subjects. So go check that out. Um, <clears throat> in addition to um, all of these resources, um, TRWD Conservation also provides these type of um, presentations that are water conservation and gardening presentations and we partner with other organizations in order to provide those organizations like the Tanner County Master Gardeners and Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And so now I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce our speaker now that I've told you a little bit about Tarrant Regional Water District and our speaker is Steve Cheney and he is a Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service horticulture agent and he is an expert in um, horticulture and lawns and irrigation and all of those things. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it over to Steve and let him talk to you about Tough Texas Lawn Care. All right. Well, good afternoon. This is a talk about Texas lawn care. My name is Steve Cheney. I'm the extension horticulturist here in Tarrant County, and we are going to talk a little bit about the mysteries of lawn care. All right, turf grass selection for Texas. Everybody wonders about turf grass. Uh, selecting turf grass involves choosing both an adapted species, such as Bermuda grass or St. Augustine or Zoysia, and then an individual variety of that species. It's important to select a species that is adapted to the climate of your area and to the conditions of the site where it will be planted. Site conditions include, and, and probably the most important one, is shade or sun. Does it have full sun? Does it have full shade? Does it have dappled shade or whatever in between? Those are the things that keep us from having a happy lawn. Uh, certain ones will take shade, certain ones will not take shade. Uh, so know which variety that you're picking, know how much sun it has to have on any given day. 
The soil depth and quality, we have over 77 different soil types in Tarrant County alone. Uh, so who knows what type of soil type we have. Uh, in a little bit, we'll talk about doing soil samples. Uh, and that's the best way to know what type of soil you have because you have to get out there and dig in it and you dig up those soil samples so you can find out what type of soils you have. Some areas have a real deep soil. Some have, you know, literally half inch or an inch on top of rock. So knowing again ahead of time before you start uh, laying sod or putting sod or trying to get sod to grow, how deep is your soil? What type of soil is it? What's the pH? Uh, is it good quality? Is it sandy? Is it rocky? Is it clay? All those things are very, very important. Uh, intended use. Is it going to be a lawn? Is it going to be a golf course? Is it an athletic field? Or is it just a place for your 77 Great Danes to run back and forth around in the backyard? The amount of traffic is always important. Some grasses and some turfs take more abuse than others. Uh, you know, but no matter what you do, if you have a dog in the backyard that runs the fence line, none of them are really going to do a great job as far as traffic. So you got to think about that as well. Amount of rainfall or irrigation. Are you going to irrigate your lawn? Uh, is it, you know, are you going to do it by an in-ground system? Are you going to do it uh, by a sprinkler system? Or are you going to just do it by hand? Or you're going to drag hose, whatever it may be. You've got to know how much, how you're going to do it. And then you got to know how much rainfall you get in your area. And last but not least, the level of maintenance. How are you going to maintain it? Who's going to maintain it? Are you going to mow it? Are you having somebody else mow it? Um, how often are they going to mow it? Do they sharpen the blades? All those things that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So how kind of level of maintenance can you do and can you offer uh, and or afford for your turf? All right, the varieties, not all uh, varieties are mentioned with each grass type uh, because there's new ones coming out all the time. So I just mentioned some of the most common ones. Uh, seed stores and garden centers typically carry only a few varieties of each species from a single su supplier because they just you know only have so much room in the stores. It's impractical for Texas sod producers to produce a great number of varieties uh, of a single grass species. So they try to provide good quality varieties of the most improved grasses for your individual area. Bermuda is the most common one. Uh, this is just a kind of a uh, picture at College Station uh, about Bermuda. It is uh, we're probably Texas, Oklahoma, uh, a little bit of Missouri, maybe a little bit of Arkansas. We're about the only states that actively grow Bermuda. Uh, everybody else, the other 40 some odd states, consider it a weed and they're like, yuck, you know, we get rid of Bermuda. Here it works really well for us because we don't, we have a very hot temperature, uh, sometimes unforgiving summers and sometimes lots of rain, but other times lots of drought. So Bermuda is a good one. It has both rhizomes and stolons, and that means it has a root system that grows above ground and goes over and starts a new baby, or it has a root system that goes below ground and goes over and pops up a new baby in order to keep it you know, from going out farther and farther. That also is good, but it's also bad because it makes it really tough to control it because it grows underneath your flower beds, underneath your walls, underneath your sidewalks, everywhere else. But it's very forgiving grass. Uh, it's grown throughout Texas. It's tolerant of drought and traffic requires full sunlight. Uh, so we we often talk about you know how much is full sunlight. Uh, full sunlight to really be uh, happy is going to be six hours or more. So six plus hours equals full sunlight in our area. Uh, varieties are available for lawns, they're available for golf courses, and they're available for athletic fields. Biggest difference is on the maintenance and how often you mow them and how you take care of them. Uh, seed is available for many varieties. Other varieties don't produce a viable seed, such as some of the hybrids, 
and can be only established from sod, sprig, or plugs. Many names, uh, varieties out there, these tend to have a finer texture, uh, create a denser turf than a common Bermuda. Garden centers typically can only carry a few of them, such as Arizona Common, Blackjack, Blue Muda, uh, Contessa, Jackpot, La Paloma, Majestic Mohawk, and you can read all the rest of them on here. Uh, Veracruz, Yukon, uh, and they, they all have good things to them, and they have upsides and downsides. So do your homework before you buy a particular variety. See if it fits your needs and fits your, your climate and your yard. The hybrid or, or vegetative Bermuda are usually darker, denser, uh, much finer, and are much more aggressive than the common Bermuda. Many uh, require more maintenance, such as more frequent mowing, uh, more nitrogen fertilizer, the hybrid Bermudas are better adapted for use on golf courses, uh, fairways, and sports fields than for home lawns. Uh, so you want to be careful and not always just because it's at your favorite golf course is it going to be the best for your yard. Uh, some of the ones such as Baby, Celebration, uh, Common, Grimes, Tiff Green, Tiffway, Tiff Sport, uh, Tiff 10, some of those are really great. Yeah, you got to think, OK, if they're good for a uh, golf course, why are they not good for my uh, lawn? And, and the simple reason, some of them are have the ability to be cut at an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or you know three eighths of an inch. That's, you think about that when you you uh, have would have a need for that in your uh, in your yard. That means you have to cut it every day. And who wants to? Is there anybody really, really wants to go out there and cut their lawn seven days a week, you know, 45, 46 weeks of the year? So think about that. Buffalo grass is another grass. It's a, it's a prairie grass. It does well uh, if you don't have any traffic and you don't want to mow it and you don't want to water it and you don't want to fertilize it and you just want to have some grass. So that's for that area. If you got a big acreage, that's for that area way out in the back that you don't get to very often. Uh, that you, you know, you don't mind if it looks a little bit off. Or it's not a perfectly manicured lawn. Uh, so you know, Bermuda or buffalo grass has its good things, but remember, buffalo is a uh, prairie grass. So that means it's used to having a lot of friends along with it of other kinds of prairie grasses. So when you pull it all out by itself, put it in a yard, it wants to go mix with all the other people, all the other grasses. Uh, and so they're all much bigger and stronger, so they take over. And so pretty soon, you don't have much buffalo grass left. So it's not one we recommend in most cases, but it is one that grows well in our area. Zoysia, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it has both rhizomes and stolons. Uh, and it's a great grass. It's a very, it's a good warm season grass. Uh, it will take uh, pretty much as much sun as you can give it uh, and takes almost as much shade as you can give it. Uh, so when you start talking about zoysia, we, we say a minimum of four hours of sun and as much as you want to give it otherwise. So it does take more, a lot more shade than a Bermuda. Uh, not quite as much as St. Augustine, but it does take a lot more sun. And the biggest thing for that is that you don't have to mow it as often, doesn't hardly have any weeds, it has very few pests and very few insect issues. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the area in which zoysia is similar to Bermuda, uh, requires a little less fertilizer. It's very drought tolerant. Uh, they do go brown a little sooner than Bermuda which is all right during the extended drought, but it'll come back. Uh, Zoysia does well on lawns and in recreational areas uh, with up to moderate traffic. It's best established from sod. Uh, seeds, sprig, and, and plugs generally take longer than Bermuda grass to completely cover an area. Uh, they have some really improved varieties that have done well in the rat last few years. Uh, so they're, most of them are medium texture, but they have some that are fine texture. Some that are darker green, some that are lighter green. So pay attention to the name and the variety. 
uh, and to see which one you get. So here's a few of them, uh, Carrizo, Crown, El Toro, Jammer, uh, Meyer, Palisades. Palisades is probably the one that you see the most uh, in our area. Then they have Cavalier and Diamond, Royal, uh, Xeon and Zorro. I really like both of those. Emerald is an older variety. It's very similar uh, to, the, to some of the other Metrellas and, and growth. Um, only two seeded varieties are available, and that's Zenith and Compadre. Uh, they require real warm uh, soils to germinate are much lower than seeded Bermuda. So the rest of them are going to be strictly from sod. St. Augustine, that's the one that primary most people have. I mean, it has a great, uh, you know, it's a good grass. It just unfortunately probably has um, more pests and more diseases than any of our other grasses and requires more water than their other grasses. Uh, so that's something we want to think about, but it does offer the most shade trowers. So, you know, it's a trade off sometimes. Uh, often is very coarse. Uh, used mainly as a long grass. It's the most shade tolerant of all of our warm season grasses. It can be grown in most of Texas, although it may be killed by severe winters uh, when you get up closer to the Red River. St. Augustine is less drought tolerant than Bermuda or Zoysia. And it can be grown in central and west Texas with some supplemental irrigation. It's best adapted in southeast Texas. Doesn't tolerate uh, high traffic. Uh, and again, it primarily established from sod. Uh, Marishade is a good one. Del Mar, Floritan, Palmetto, Raleigh, Sapphire, Seville. Those are all good ones that we see. Uh, Floritan has a very wide blade, uh, but not a quite as good as shade tolerance. But it's the best drought tolerant, porous cold tolerant. So, you know, anytime you get you gain in one side, you kind of sometimes lose in the other side. So it's a great grass and there's a lot of things out there in its favor. So practically, you know, in practical areas, where should you put turf or where should you not? Uh, you've got to, to really think about it, uh, have the correct proportion. Do we really need those acres and acres of, of turf? Probably not anymore because we don't have the huge families. We don't have the need to have all that. And they just require a lot of water and a lot of fertilizer. Uh, did you choose the appropriate selection? Does it match your maintenance schedules? Does it match your needs? Does it match your watering abilities? Think about that when you choose your selection. Uh, proper placement in landscape. You know, we need to have some in the front yard uh, for curb appeal. Uh, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking some of it out and putting some flowers in and give you something back without having to mow it all the time. We need a little bit in the backyard to uh, let the dogs out on or perhaps let the kids out on. Uh, but again, do we need an acre or two in the backyard? So think about that. Uh, management practices are important. Uh, we want to be sure that we're mulching all of our lawn clippings and so that we're not bagging them, taking them off the property. Uh, we want to mow a little bit at a taller height during the, during the summer. You know, we start off at a lower height uh, at the beginning of the year, and as it gets hotter, we gradually rise it up. And then at the hottest part of the summer, we're maybe half inch to an inch taller than normal. And that shades that soil keeps the temperature down, uh, and it also keeps the evaporation from the water from coming back up. So it's good, and then as it starts to cool back down, then we gradually lower it back down, uh, back to the normal level that we want to keep it at. One of the things that we often don't think about is aeration of our turf. You know, you say, what's aeration? Well, that's simply going in and aerating it so it can breathe a little better. If it gets too compacted, um, it's not going to do good. The water is not going to go down through it. The uh, fertilizer is not going to go down through it. The root system is not going to develop as well. So think about aeration. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of aeration. 
and later in the talk we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about aeration uh, with a lot of the take all root rot and the fungal issues that we've been having uh, especially this year with all the cool temperatures and rain we may want to look at the addition of composted compost excuse me uh, compost is slightly acidic and if we can slightly lower our, our acidity levels for our pH even for a short time uh, the fungal matter doesn't uh, doesn't live in that acidic environment so it'll shut it down and that's the quickest and easiest way to do it. All right placement of turf again is avoid long narrow turf areas that are difficult to water. You know, you look at the, the picture on the left, you know, what good does that really do you? You figure that if people park on both sides, they're getting out and they're walking on the grass to get out of the car. Uh, you know, it's hard to mow. It's hard to take care of. It's, as you can see, all the water running off uh, on the uh, concrete, it's hard to water efficiently. So maybe that would be better to have a tree or something different there. Uh, underneath a, a big tree where you got a lot of root system in the middle and sometimes it's really tough to do. Uh, it's hard to water, it's hard to maintain, all those things. So when you get into some of those areas then you go over to what we see in picture three on the far right and that's, that's put some ground cover. Maybe put some hardscape, uh, maybe make some beds, maybe just put some ground cover underneath that shade. Uh, less to mow, looks nice and less to water fertilize and to mess with. All right, that's a little bit about um, sod in a, in a hole, you know, and you say, okay, is that the only thing out there? No, it's not the only thing, but you know, why make it difficult? Well, you know, we get so many calls every every week at the, during the, at the office saying, what do I do with my sod? How do I do this? Why is it turning colors? Uh, do I really need to mow it as often? I'm getting tired of mowing it. You know, all of those things. So keep those in mind. Uh, think about them. Uh, when you pick out your sod, take, do your homework and, you know, choose the right one. Make sure you can maintain it or have somebody that can maintain it uh, and fertilize only when you need it, water when you need it. Don't be a slave to to your grass. Don't be a slave to your turf and enjoy it. All right. Our next series, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about it. Uh, hopefully answer a few more questions for you. Resources, lots of great resources out there. The number one resource would be agihorticulture.tamu.edu. Uh, and that is our banner uh, website for Texas A&M. It gets about 25 million hits a month. Uh, so it's if you put in something horticulture, that's usually going to be the top one or two that's going to be pop up. It has links to everything else. If you just want to know about turf, though, you can go to aggieturf.tamu.edu. And also just kind of a fun thing, admitting no matter what state you are, uh, you can put just about any horticultural term and then, and for instance, if you're in Texas, and then .tamu.edu, and it'll take you to that website. Uh, and you can do the same thing in your land grant university in another state. So if it's Ohio State or Louisiana State or uh, what, Washington State, whatever it may be, uh, just put in whatever you're looking for and then dot whatever that land grant university is. If you have some additional questions from today and, and from the other two parts, Feel free to call me. Uh, it's easier to email me than it is to call because I can't keep up with all the phone calls uh, and the emails so, you know, are there. So it's just ask dash Cheney at tamu.edu. Uh, feel free to call my office 817-884-2700. Um, lots of things out there, lots of resources, but we're always here for you. Uh, and we'll always try to help you as much as we can uh, so that you end up having good success in gardening and it's much easier to be a happy gardener than to be an unhappy gardener, much more fun. Hope these have helped you. 
uh, feel free to get in contact if they didn't or if you need more information. Uh, but Aggie Horticulture will have just about anything you can ever think about. Until the next time we meet, enjoy your gardening. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us for the um, Tough Texas Lawn Care series. If you can visit um, safeterrantwater.com slash events and um, look at future events just like this one. And you can also view some videos of past events that have happened if you missed any of those. Like I said, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and type them into the question box right now and we'll get back to you with an answer. Or if you'd like, you can email conservation at trwd.com and we'll get back to you with an answer from there as well. We also just started a monthly newsletter that talks about our events and water conservation news and gardening information and information about native plants and things like that. And you can sign up for that at safeterrantwater.com slash sign dash up. Um, and stay connected with us. So thank you so much for joining us tonight for our Tough Texas Lawn Care series, and we hope to see you again for the next event.